And I'm talking with my friend and my state representative, Harry Osterman of the 14th District. Uh, Harry, uh, let's go back a little bit to state government. Let's, uh, someone in the audience was talking to me before you came on, before we started the show, and uh, he was encouraging us to uh, challenge uh, Mr. Madigan, uh, Speaker of the House. And uh, it was over uh, actual uh, budget reform and felt that this uh, Mr. Madigan has been blocking uh, some moves that could be made. And this fellow, who was someone you probably know, was encouraging us to maybe have a, a demonstration or a blockade in, in Mr. Madigan's neighborhood. What's your take on the role that Mr. Madigan is playing these days? Uh, you know, he's got a new governor. Uh, he certainly was uh, at odds with the past governor. Uh, the new governor, they seem to be cooperating, but he also has a daughter who is uh, talked about running for higher office or a different office. So I would like to get you, you as my representative, to share with me and the broader listening audience your take on Speaker Madigan and his role these days. Uh, as, as forthright as you can be. I'm a very forthright person, but I would think that if a bunch of people from Rogers Park went down to the 13th Ward, I, I think don't he know. was hoping there would be people from all over the city. I, I, <laughs> it could. I don't think that he would be phased much. I think that um, Mike Madigan is someone who knows state government very well. I think that um, I think that over this summer we're going to tell a lot of the priorities. I think that um, people kind of blame him for the failure of the income tax defeat, but the reality is that there are. A lot of House members that um, it was a, it was not an easy vote to, to vote to raise the income tax because people are going through tough times. So I think that um, he, he's someone that understands that. I think he understands government. Uh, I think that um, time is going to tell this summer how um, how we do that to not uh, you know really hurt people. So um, I think time is going to tell if he's going to be an agent of supporting the governor through this tough time or someone who's going to. Uh, try to block it. I will tell you that um, myself and Julie Hamos and a lot of other progressive legislators, um, you know, from time to time, we're, always, we're, we're having challenges with the speaker on certain issues. Uh, I pushed campaign finance reform big time this year. Um, I supported House Bill 24, which modeled the federal government, and um, you know, him and him and I uh, kind of went round and round on that. There was a bill that was passed that he was supportive of that was uh, less. Uh, uh, less, in, um, you know, less progressive. Less progressive. That's that's a good way to put it. Um, but I think he's someone who cares about state government, and I think um, I think we're going to see this summer how all that unfolds. You know, uh, I got to say that uh, I get most of my mail over here at the Heartland, but I do get some mail at home, uh, and that has my voting address. And I did get uh, over the last two weeks, I must have received ten letters from Mike Madigan. Uh, they're basically addressed to Dear Illinois Reformer. And uh, I don't know what this is, what, uh, what this new is, what his, uh, is, is he initiating a new policy? Is everybody getting this? Is he going to, uh, uh, I mean, who's he sending these to and what's well, the let deal? Me, let me say, give it to, to his credit. I mean, him and I had a disagreement on campaign finance reform. Uh, the reality is that we passed a number of ethical reforms dealing with the procurement code to um, get away with some of the uh, the kinky and illegal behavior that the governor uh, Blagojevich had where these big contracts are going to campaign contribute con contributors so there's some significant reforms that he helped author him and uh, Senator Cullerton president Senate president Cullerton put together a um, a bipartisan committee uh, kind of parallel to the Collins Commission to look at some of these things so um, we, we, there were some modest reforms that were done that are going to help uh, clean up state government. Um, so he helped author all those. So, um, but we, there's, the, you know, getting the money out of politics uh, is something that I focused on. And um, I think the bill that was passed was kind of a watered down version of uh, um, something that should have been passed. Um, you know, when all of the Bogoyevich stuff was going on and we watched the Senate, the Illinois Senate, uh, do the impeachment procedure. Uh, one of the things, as much as I was never a fan of the governor, uh, I, uh, w when I watched these senators uh, kind of taking him on, I couldn't help but think there's a lot of sleazy people over the years, no one specifically in state government, or people who have certainly uh, gone a little bit outside the law. 
And I'm just wondering what you think the process of impeaching the governor uh, might have done to have some introspection on the part of state legislators, state senators, uh, and if uh, people are maybe uh, moving forward on being a little bit more honest or being a little bit more uh, in tune with the needs of the people rather than just using government and politics as a way to kind of uh, enhance their own situation. I, I think that one of the unfortunate uh, side effects of Governor Blagojevich's action and Governor Ryan's action is that the perception and trust in state government is at its lowest. So there are a lot of people, myself included, our Senator Heather Staines, Julie Hamos, a lot of people that devote themselves. These are some of the best people in well, our government. Well, I mean, we, we devote ourselves to do things for our community and, and leave our families to represent our community. So when um, these things happen, it kind of uh, taints all of us and it diminishes all of us. So right. I think that um, I think that all you know, people in government are looking at themselves and say, how can we do more? I think that one of the most positive, if you can say positive, but... I think people, unlike any time in the past, are engaged in what's going on in Springfield. And as someone who supports common sense gun control laws that die all the time, I've always got the feeling that people don't pay attention. They focus on what's happening in Washington. They focus on what's happening in City Hall. And I think that with, um, again, not a positive, but what's happened is that people are, have stepped up and said, what's going on in state government? And they're demanding more from us. So I, I think that um, I've gotten more emails and letters from people this year about every type of issue. Um, I think the, the most important thing is the Illinois citizens are engaged in the process. They're holding us accountable is the way it should be. And um, for those people that you're talking about that kind of um, skirt their responsibilities or focus Skirt's on them, better than sleazy or whatever um, I said. You know, <laughs> focus on themselves over, I think that their time in public office will be uh, ending soon. So I think... Um, I think, you know, people, it's a difficult time, and there's real resources that, that help people in state government, and, and we have to make sure those programs are funded, and that state government is working for people, and it's not just sucking money out of people's um, wallets. So uh, it's a challenging time. I think a lot, everyone in state government is kind of reflecting on what's going on. And, and again, I think the citizens of our state are demanding that we are working for them more than we have in the past. So. I think that's, that's uh, a good point, that uh, you say that uh, a lot of times people look at Springfield last. They're more likely to look what's going on in Washington, what's going on in city council, then maybe even uh, the county government and the state is last because it's further away. But, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I know that's the order of the way I look at things. You know, I mean, maybe city council, then the, then the state, and then I'll, uh, not the state, then the national government, federal government, and then I'll look at the county a little bit, and the state I kind of leave to last. But the state is a big player in, uh, in all of our lives. I mean, it is, it's certainly a big deal. And um, you have a lot of challenges that you're dealing with. I like how you say that people are a little bit more engaged. Uh, I think that uh, we're in a time of engagement and uh, that's going to have ramifications, uh, probably positive ramifications for all of us. I, I think I think it's I think it's coupled with our state being at a, kind of a low point uh, ethically in our reputation. I think it also is which came right after we had we elected well, a president. I, I think it's a combination, though. I think Barack's election has sparked people to get in, involved in the process, and I think that uh, you know many of the listeners out there travel the states around the, the, the country to help Barack get elected. They see the positive work he's doing. A lot of people are leaving to go work for him, um, but I think the combination, I think people are expecting more out of, out of government and, and elected officials. Um, they want to see it work in the right direction, so it's... Um, you know, I, I'm hoping that things are going to get better, and that's something that myself and a lot of other progressive legislators are focused on.